the call itself reminded me of a show that I'm watching right now with my wife, Billions. And if you've never seen the show, it's really around a district attorney or lawyer who's kind of on a mission to take down Wall Street. And in particular, um, I think his name is Bobby Axelrod, which is this billionaire uh, who essentially has made most of his money through insider trading. Okay. And so what's interesting is obviously in Wall Street, it's uh, you go to jail uh, for insider trading. But when it comes to commercial real estate, it's actually expected that you would have some sort of intel or insider information prior to making an investment. And that might sound like news. I think it is, frankly, for many people. Like anybody that's in the know into commercial real estate is probably not even listening to this because this is information that they would they would already um, like, yeah, that's the game. But if you're new or you're kind of transitioning from, say, residential into commercial or doing your first development, then I think that this might be uh, relevant and somewhat insightful. Okay, and so I'll just give you a couple of things that I see when I'm uh, working on a new project or I'm dealing with someone that's kind of new to the world of commercial real estate and information that I'm looking for might be like when is a tenant moving? Why are they moving? Uh, what are the rezoning bylaws, right? This is when you're talking to counselors. And I'll, I'll just preface this by like the insider information I'm talking about is not uh, illegal, right? This isn't paying people off or bribing. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm basically talking about like getting really deep and understanding and essentially having information before other people do. Uh, but you're doing it through legal means, okay? So hopefully that... Um, <laughs> That maybe I don't know if I that needs to be said, but if you watch the show Billions, then uh, I don't want to draw like a complete parallel. Um, but hopefully, you're kind of seeing that having this kind of intel and insights is extremely important. And I'll I'll actually I was listening to a podcast with Ronnie Coleman. If you don't know who he is, he was the Mr. Olympia for eight straight years, right? So he and Lee Haney hold the record for the most Mr. Olympias. Then Arnold Schwarzenegger at seven and then i think dorian yates at six and blah 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 but anyways um when i was growing up i used to kind of read a lot of the muscle magazines and i remember ronnie coleman you know but he was always kind of like i don't i think the 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 highest he ever placed when he was when he was uh, prior to um winning was like seventh or eighth place and so he was always kind of like 16th to eighth place and then uh, I, th I, I, but from the story, he said that he was thinking of quitting and prior to that, what he did is he just went and met with Flex Wheeler. So Flex Wheeler, um, he was the runner up a few times and he was kind of always my favorite, uh, bodybuilder. And anyways, Flex Wheeler basically kind of opened up the playbook and said, look, this is how we are winning. This is how you compete at this level. And you know, I'm, I'm taking it at face value that Ronnie basically said, oh, okay, so these are like the type of drugs I need to take, how how much, how often, what what I need to, you know, maybe the diet and all the rest of it. And at the end of it, uh, the next year he won. Okay, so that is like, to me, it's like everybody is competing at a very high level. But when you start to, when, when you're actually looking to win, the those little like just little things can make a huge difference. And I'll give you an example. I'm not going to tell you exactly what I told this individual because it is proprietary. But when I got on the uh, call with, I'll just, his name is Corey. Um, he asked me a few questions and I just said, look, I'm just going to cut right to the point because like you're a friend of a friend and uh, I'm looking to just like, I'm busy, you're busy. So here's, here it is in a nutshell. Right. And what I shared with him was a lesson that cost me about $400,000 to learn. So that one lesson now could potentially be the difference between him being like profitable or unprofitable, doing the deal, not doing the deal, making sure that he has this particular thing covered off. And like, this is the type of, especially when you're dealing in, in large numbers and, and more complex projects, like this was a development, um, I think it's just so key to have someone that you can call and ask those type of questions, right? And 
I could only do that because I had done a project in that specific town. If he was developing in a different place, I wouldn't be able to give him that type of intel in like because I wouldn't know it, right? I could give him more generic information that would still be helpful, but you really want to know like who are you dealing with at the town? Like what are the things that they are looking for? And um, anyway, so I, I just kind of thought that that might be useful to share because I think too often we just focus on the numbers, we focus on just surface level details. But when you start to work with people that have been around for 20, 30, 50 years in the world of commercial real estate, they start to ask the question and they start to press, especially on me um, when I'm raising money or I'm talking to investors, they'll say like, so who's the seller? Why are they selling? Why do we think we're smarter than that seller? Right? Because on in any transaction, you have a buyer and a seller, and oftentimes each person thinks they're smarter than the other, right? But the difference is the seller might have owned this land for 20 years, right? And so why do we think that we are smarter than this person who's owned it for 20 years? What, what is it that we know that they don't? And then the flip side is what do they know that we don't? And I can just tell you that oftentimes, especially if you're buying from a sophisticated in, developer, investor, landowner that, that, that has had land for quite some time and you don't have any kind of prior work experience with them, so you don't really know how they operate, it would make sense to go in as skeptical and paranoid as possible, I would say. Uh, that's generally the frame that I take when I'm buying properties from people I don't know now. And it's just because there's just so many unknowns and, and hidden things. And so how do I overcome that? I overcome it by research and then finding the right people. And, and those are just through relationships. And both are going to cost me money and time and energy. And what I would say is it's worth it. And that's why like maybe this, like now that I'm just talking it through with you, uh, the piece of advice that I gave him was I said, look, if you're trying to do just one project in this one town, um, I don't know if I would do that. But if you're planning to do to be over there for the next 10, 15, 20 years, then I think it makes sense. Because I said, as much as I can tell you on this call, and even if I was to help you on a, on a go forward basis, you're still going to learn so many lessons on this first project that it's likely not going to turn out as profitable as you think. But what you could do is like, after you get deal one done, uh, you're going to know so much more. And I can just tell you that I think that the long-term horizon for this pr uh, particular location is really good. So just go into it with like a 20-year horizon, and I think it would make sense. But if you go into it just thinking it's going to be in and out and make some money, um, I think you'll be disappointed and frustrated by the end of it. So kind of a little bit of a rambling, but hopefully that... Um, you're able to take one kind of thing away from it and just realize that if you are buying a property from someone or looking to develop, try to get intel, try to get that insight from someone. And frankly, the only, like the, it's not easy and there is no cookie cutter way to do this because if there was, then everyone would do it and it would no longer be a competitive advantage. So I look at it with the perspective of because it's hard, that's good because most people are not going to do the work that's required. Okay. So the last thing I want to mention, and, and this is something that I've been kind of like rolling around in my head for a little bit, and that is uh, kind of opening up probably one time a month where for 30 minutes, uh, I'll, I'll just have Zoom calls that are recorded. I'm going to share them on my podcast. And so if, as long as you're comfortable asking the question, I'm, I'm going to have to be very choosy in terms of who I accept to do this with. But essentially, it'll be like, I don't know if I want to call it coaching or mentoring, or basically, it's just like, look, you get to ask me questions, I'm going to ask you questions about a project or a property that you're working on right now. Because I'll generally get people asking me constantly throughout the week, hey, Shane, can I pick your brain? Can I do this? Can I do that? I don't coach anymore. I don't charge. Uh, I'm I'm just too focused on my developments and our construction company to do that. However, I really do like to help. And I think that oftentimes these conversations could be one to many versus one to one because one to one, they go away and the value is gone. And I, I just don't view that as a very good use of my time. I'd much rather record it, share it with you 
And then you can listen in and say, oh, those are the type of questions that Shane asks when he's looking at a property. And it's not to say that these are the best questions or the only questions, but it's just a different way to think about it. And I've mentioned this in the past, and that is if I would have had someone like my father-in-law or some of the other mentors I've had uh, earlier on in my in my life, I would have saved myself like millions of dollars in mistakes and years of, of basically pursuing the wrong path, the wrong properties, not having clarity because oftentimes we're too close to something. It's hard to take a step back. And um, I think that this kind of 30 minute call would be helpful. And so um, I, I would have some criteria. You're not there to pitch. You're not there to, you don't, like, you don't even have to necessarily discuss the actual location of the property because maybe you don't have it under contract and you want to keep that confidential all that is fine i would have to know it and i wouldn't share that on on the call but the idea would be what are the principles and lessons and questions and understandings that we would have through a, a real conversation and then i would just share it on the podcast and the idea would be that it would help more people than just yourself because frankly i hear the same questions over and over and i don't think it's uh um yeah, I, I feel like this could become like a, um, a larger body of work that could help other people. So anyways, if that's of interest, uh, in the show notes, you can find my email. You can send it to me, uh, the type of deal, and I'll send you kind of a one pager that I need filled out in order to evaluate whether or not the project would be something I could even help with. And if it is, then we'll set up a Zoom call on a day of the month that I know I'm going to have time. I'm going to block off probably two hours, which would be four 30 minute calls and bang them out. So if that's of interest, send me an email. If not, hopefully this was a value and uh, we'll see you next week.